Hey everyone, welcome to part 2 of Skeleton Knight in Another World Recapped. Ark tests out the spell on his arm, and while it becomes human for a moment, it instantly returns back to its bone form. Ark is now fully sure that he is cursed. Ark and Ariane go to Old Lav, where they will hunt for more of the slavers who have captured elves. On their travels, they stay at an inn, and there they are warned that in recent days there have been attacks done by haunted wolves. They usually attack innocent travelers. In the meantime, Yuriana leaves Rodin and makes her way towards Limbolt. Arian wants to hunt the wolves as their fur could be a great present for even when she gets married. Very soon after that, the wolves attack them and Ark realizes that the main wolf is actually wearing a ring just like the basilisk that Ark killed. That ring must have some magic energy in it as it gives power to the wolf. Ark manages to destroy the ring, and then the wolf starts to act totally different. It seems that the wolf was being controlled by the magic ring. The wolves do not want to fight anymore, and they leave in peace. Ark is now totally sure that the ring not only gives powers to the animals, but it also is a form of mind control. Ariane wants to take some of the fur from the wolves that they have killed, and soon after that, Ark is taken by Ponta to the location where Yuriana's carriage has been attacked. There are made, and all the guards have been killed by an assassin and one guard who is a traitor. Ark goes to fight them, and the killers are no match for his armor, nor his magic. He soon kills them with the help of the wolves he freed. Ark then resurrects Yuriarna Ferna and her guards with a special spell that he has learned. He then disappears, but Yuriarna sees him and thinks that he is a guardian angel. After some time, Ark and Ariana reach Olav, and there they meet up with that ninja who has cat ears. The ninja introduces herself as Chiyom and tells them that she is part of the Jinchin clan. She has been searching for the members of her species as they were captured by humans, and she asks Ark about his knowledge of the ninjas. Ark soon learns that the entire clan was created by someone called the Great Founder. He is actually just a human, and his name is Hanzo. Ark figures out that this man must also be from Japan like himself. Hanzo must have arrived on this world and created the ninja clan. Shiyom asks for Ark's and Ariane's help, and they agree. Elsewhere, Dakar is angry that the wolves did not kill Yuriyama. He thinks that now he will soon be attacked if he decides to hide away. Shiyom has a plan. She wants Ark and Ariane to attack the city market, so they distract the guards. In the meantime, she will get information. Gomen, another ninja, joins the team and Ark soon realizes that Hanzo named himself after Hanzo Hattori, and that he used the names of other ninjas from Earth as special clan names. Gomen is really strong and tall, so he and Ark begin their duel. They are actually really close in their power levels, and they decide to become friends. Gomen and Ark later attack the guards, and they try to compete to see who is better in a fight. They use so much of their power and are so destructive that they get buried under rocks. Dakaris very soon learns that his guards are being attacked, so he sends even more soldiers to protect the slave markets. Chiyom and Ariam start freeing a lot of slaves and fighting the guards. In the meantime, Gomen starts fighting with the soldiers who have just arrived. He sends Ark to help Ariane and Chiyom so they can free more slaves. Soon Ark and his friends free many slaves, but they also find cages full of dead slaves. Ark using his magic teleports all the surviving slaves to a safe place and then goes to help Gomen to kill all the soldiers. They manage to destroy the entire slave market. Ark and Gomen then take all the dead slaves and give them a real funeral. Chiyom is now even more determined to get stronger and save her people. Sechrian reveals that he is actually working with Sect and he kills Dakares. Sect now becomes the only heir to the throne as he does not know that Yuriarna is still alive. In the meantime, Yuriarna finally arrives in Limbolt, and there she learns about all that has happened. She even learns that Dekaris and Siriarna are dead. It is obvious that Sect wants to kill her as well so he can take the throne. Chiyom and Ariam talk about Dekaris who worked for the Holy Revlon Empire and enslaved many elves. The Emperor of Revlon is called Domitianus, and he is very impressed that Sect has managed to kill all his siblings and rise to power so quickly. Fumba, one of the agents of Domitianus, is still at Rodin and is trying to destabilize the entire region. Fumba is actually in a desert nearby Rodin and has found a giant sand creature that can kill even other monsters. Ark and Ariane fight off several monstrous wyverns and they finally reach a village that is very close to the desert. Ark notices that Ariane is acting very strange and she seems a bit nervous. Ark learns that the slave trade is very much legal in Revlon, which is why Ariane is so worried. They go to a nearby tavern in the village and there they meet an elf called Carsey Held. He tells them that elves can be friends with the villagers. He lives in the village and actually studies monsters. Carsey tells Ark that if he hunts a specific monster for him, he will give him a map of Revlon. Ariane is still really anxious and she does not believe that elves can live with humans. Ark and Ariane get drunk that night and especially Ariane who seems to not be able to handle her alcohol. The following morning, Ariane gets really mad because all the villagers think that she and Ark had sex because they were so crazy last night. Carsey wants Ark Ark to capture the giant sandworm and he wants to use a goblin corpse as bait. Ariane recovers from her hangover. Soon they are attacked by the worm and it has actually become much larger than it usually is. Ark is the only one who can handle it in a fight and soon he manages to defeat it. Ark spots another ring on the worm and destroys it. Carsey tells Ariane that he also once hated humans in the past, 
but has learned to care for them. He tells her that there is a nearby town called Rodin, where a human and elf rule over everyone. The human lord saved the elf from slavery and they fell in love. Ariane is really happy to hear that it gives her more faith in the future of humanity and elves. Soon, it is revealed that Fumba influenced the worm and made it grow so big. Ponta, Ariane, and Ark arrive in a town called Kashek. There they separate as they must find other elf slaves. Ark finds out that scary screams have been heard from a nearby fortress at night. People in the village have also been going missing for a while. Ark also saves a girl from the street, and she wants to stay with Ark. Ariane does not like that a girl is hanging around Ark, and she is a bit jealous. The people who tried to kidnap the girl actually work for Fumba, who wants to find people and use them as food for his monsters. Fumba is angry at the kidnappers and throws them at his giant monster tiger. Ariane also finds out that elves are being kept in that fortress near the village. The group goes inside and they finally find Fumba. Ariane is put under some sort of spell and attacks Ark. Ark uses Ponta to free Ariane from mind control. Fumba reveals his true identity, he is Rosambania monster sorcerer, and he can make any monster be his slave. Fumba reveals that the elves have been used for the emperor's experiments and also as food for months now. Ark is now furious and he kills the giant white tiger and the other monsters. Chidoma also shows up and fights with him. Fumba then wakes up his final monster, a giant hydra. He escapes and leaves Ark to deal with the monster. The monstrous hydra unleashes its attacks on Ark, Chiom, and Ariane. It has a powerful fire breath that burns everything in its way. Fumba is proud as he thinks that Ark and his friends have been killed. Fumba then sends his hydra to kill the town of Kashk. Fumba in the past was part of a clan of elders, but they banished him because he was too weak. Now he wants revenge against everyone and to prove his power. Ark actually used his holy shield and saved himself and his friends. Ariane wakes up and is furious at Fumba as she hears all of the things he said about elves. Ariane and Chion go after Fumba and Ark goes to fight the Hydra before it destroys the nearby village. Ark summons an infernal demon called Efrit and attacks the Hydra. Chion and Ariane manage to find Fumba and begin their battle with him. They actually make fun of Fumba, so he becomes angry and attacks them. Chidon then attacks him and manages to damage the marking on his body. These are special magic markings that give him control of various monsters. Ariane then uses her fire sword and burns Fumba. In the meantime, the Hydra has suffered damage from Ifrit and Ark, takes the chance to finish it up. The Hydra is now totally destroyed and the village is safe. Elsewhere, Yuriana meets with elven elders Fangas and Dillian. She promises that the Croton land will accept any responsibility regarding the elf slaves. She wants to find all the missing elves and help them defend their territory. In exchange, she just wants their help when she takes over the Croton throne. Ariane is now uncertain about her future, but Chiom and Ark promise to always be there for her. Sect is furious when he learns that Yuriana is alive and that his assassins have failed, and he is a bit scared that Yuriana has managed to make a deal with the elves. In the meantime, Domitianus learns that Fumba and all of his monsters have been killed. Ark continues his journey with Chiom and Ariane, hoping to one day solve his curse and help the land. And that is the end of the Anim recap. Thank you so much for watching.